हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल ऑफ आम सी सो प्लीज इफ यू लाइक दैट टॉपिक लाइक एंड ऑल्सो शेयर माई चैनल एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल ऑफ आम सी सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज टाइप्स ऑफ रिडॉक्स टाइड्रेशन ओके सो वी कैन स्टार्ट द टॉपिक सो वी कैन वी शुड नो वॉट इज रिडॉक्स वी ऑलरेडी नो वॉट इज टाइड्रेशन एंड वी शुड नो वॉट इज रिडॉक्स सो रिडॉक्स इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ रिडक्शन एंड ऑक्सीडेशन रिएक्शन is called redox titrations okay and nothing but reduction ni oxidation ni okay stage lo jarigide danni redox titrations antaru so reduction ante enti so the removal of oxygens and addition of hydrogens and gain of electrons these conditions of reductions so these are the conditions of reduction you should remember so what is reduction means first of all you should say removal of oxygens and second point is addition of hydrogens and third point is gain of electrons so from where it is gaining it is gaining electrons from the from the oxidation okay now oxidation so what is oxidation it is against to the reduction okay so the removal of hydrogens addition of oxygens and loss of electrons due to why it is losing electrons means because it is donating its electrons to the reduction okay that's why it is losing the electrons and now we come to the redox titrations basically there are six types of reduction titrations so in that the main most important one is permanganometry and the second one is dichrometry third one is cerimetry and the fourth one is iodimetry and iodometry so remember the difference it is iodimetry and this is iodometry and bromatometry and the sixth one is the titration with potassium iodate okay so in this video i will only explain what is permanganometry okay remember this what is the permanganometry titrations okay so first i am starting that potassium permanganate so before starting into the titration we should know and we should explain what is there in the permanganometry and what are the substances we are using in the permanganometry and how the process takes place so okay so this is the main point and what is the end point and what are the indicators we are used okay so we can start potassium permanganate is a very powerful oxidizing agent and widely employed in various redox titrations so in previous video also i have told that the self indicator is known as the potassium permanganate and the most important thing is it is a self indicator and also it is a oxidizing agent itself it is acting acting as an oxidizing agent okay and this is used mainly in redox titrations so it is useful as self indicator due to its intense color and because of its intense color and the titration which employ the potassium metry potassium permanganate as an oxidizing agent is called permanganate so enduku deenu permanganate antnam ante manam ikkada potassium permang potassium permanganate ane main sample ni teeskuntunnam so andukani ee oxide ee agent ni use cheskuni manam reaction cheyadam valla i mean titration cheyadam valla deeni permanganate titration ani antnam okay so now what is the principle involved in the potassium permanganate titration okay that is nothing but permanganate okay potassium permanganate is is used as redox titrations so this is mainly used in redox titrations and by standardizing it with a standard like oxalic acid that is before it is not an summary standard ikkada principle entante potassium permanganate is used as in redox titration by standardizing it with a primary standard like oxalic acid before it is not an primary standard so remember one thing actual gun ikkada entante potassium permanganate anedi eppudu kuda self indicator and as well as oxidizing agent okay and it is an primary standard potassium permanganate is used as an primary standard but while performing the permanganometry the potassium permanganate is not an primary standard instead of that we are using an primary standard that is oxalic acid remember here okay so now we are titrating the potassium permanganate with the primary standard like oxalic acid so therefore here the oxalic acid is a primary standard okay so now potassium permanganate acts as a strong oxidizing agent in acidic medium 
that oxidizes oxalic acid into carbon dioxide. So potassium permanganate and the strong oxidizing agent kabati adi that two indra oxidizing agent estic medium low. Adi in chest nante oxidized chest and then ni oxalic acid ni carbon dioxide kinda. And here known quantity of oxalic acid is treated with the potassium permanganate. Means here we know what's the quantity of oxalic acid we are taking, and that known quantity is titrated with the potassium permanganate. Okay, so end point. You should know what is the end point that is from colorless to the pink color is observed. Okay, now we should know what is an indicator. So, what is an indicator means we know the substance which gives the end point. To the reaction or titration is known as the indicator. So here we are using the potassium permanganate as a self indicator. Okay. Now the reaction where we see is here KMnO4, which is nothing but the potassium permanganate. It is titrating with the oxalic acid and the sulfuric acid, where it gives rise to the with two moles of KMnO4 is reacted with the oxalic acid that is H2C2O4 and a sulfuric acid where it gives the potassium sulfate and and as well as water and carbon dioxide okay remember here we are using potassium permanganate as an substance and the oxalic acid and the sulfuric acid where we are titrating these three substances then we get the k2so4 and 2mno and 2mnso4 and 8h2o and 10 co2 okay and here KMnO4 is the potassium permanganate and C2H2C2O4 is the oxalic acid and sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So K2SO4 is a, is a potassium sulfate. When these substances three is combined to react that produces potassium sulfate and magnesium sulfate and as well as the water and carbon dioxide. Okay, now we are entering into the standardization. So, not standardization is nothing but, so we are titrating in the burette. Okay, so first when we are getting into the standardization of potassium permanganate, that is of 0 0.1 normal, normality, take 0 0.1 normal of oxalic acid in a clonical flask. So, here we should make to know that we are taking the, to take the potassium permanganate in the burette and oxalic acid that is of 0 0.1 normal in the clonical flask so in the addition of oxalic acid there should be the addition of the sulfuric acid that is of 5 ml okay remember that that is of 5 ml and you should make it as the one mole okay one molarity and warm it for 70 degrees so fit now after completing the clonical flask you should know that adding in the buret so in, in our convenience, we are taking here as in the burette the potassium permanganate and start titration the, the solution up to the end point pink color. So titrate it completely where we get the pink color and next read off, I mean record the solution. I mean record at where the potassium permanganate is converts the solution into the pink color and note down the reading at the burette and later on prepare the titrations for three times to get the precise value so and make the average for each of the three values with the three and take the mean of them calculate the normality of potassium permanganate now n1v1 is equal to n2v2 limitations according to our permanganometry that is the major problems are potassium permanganate is difficult in pure forms so we cannot get the potassium permanganate in pure forms and it is free from manganese dioxide and as well as in potassium permanganate there is no liberation of manganese dioxide and here we are getting the manganese dioxide due to the reaction is concluded with the distilled water. So ordinary distilled water contains some organic impurities that are reduced substances and form manganese dioxide. Okay. Manganese dioxide catalyzes the potassium permanganate as follows. So generally remember the potassium permanganate reaction during the remember potassium permanganate and the reaction during the product when manganese dioxide and produce and the most thing is here uh, whenever we are getting the manganese dioxide because of 
सो रिमेंबर हियर पोटाशियम पर् मैग्ने बिकाज आफ पोटाशियम पर् मैग्ने मन की एट मैग्नीज डयाक्सइड प्रोड्यूस अव बट मन टैट्रेषन डिस्टल वाटर यूज वाला मन की मैग्नीज डयाक्सइड प्रोड्यूस सो मैग्नीज डयाक्सइड प्रोड्यूस अव मन की रियाक्षन अने इकड़ेला फाउ फोर एम एंड ओ फोर दट मैग्नीज आक्सइड वित् द वाटर इन यूज टू द एम एंड ओ टू प्लस थ्री ओ टू प्लस ओ हेच मैनस् अप्लीकेशन इट ईज यूज एन एस एफ हईड्रोजन पेराक्सइड सो टू प्रिपेर द एस एफ हईड्रोजन पेराक्सइड यू वी यू यूज द पर् मैग्नोमेट्री एंड पर् मैग्नोमेट्री इज यूज टू डिटेक्ट द डिमेशन आफ नईट्रेट्स एंड पर्क्लोरइट and it is used to detect whether the sample contains nitrates or perchlorates and malic acid content in the cherry juice can be done by permanganate so in our content if there is any malic acid in the cherry juice so it can be detected by the permanganate and determination of calcium as calcium oxalate can be done by the permanganate so it is completely about the potassium permanganate so please like if you so please comment if you have any doubts and as well as like my channel